Do your eyes get red, teary, watery, itchy, and flaky every single time you put on eye makeup? Well, if you wanna know some tips as to how you can start tolerating your eye makeup again, keep watching. everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, board certified ophthalmologist and lover of all things beauty. And on this channel, we talk about eye makeup health, eye health, eye surgery, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, I'd love it if you wouldn't mind taking a minute to just hit that like and subscribe button so you can follow along and get all of the videos as soon as I produce them. All right, so I was watching YouTube shorts and I was watching Molly Burke. I don't know if you are familiar with her. She's this huge, massive, um, big star on YouTube. She's got like 2 million subscribers and she is blind. She talks a lot about living with retinitis pigmentosa, which is a, an inherited retinal degeneration condition. And so she's a young woman who's blind and she just talks about and vlogs about her life and all the things that happened to her. But she recently uploaded this onto her shorts. Let's take a look. I need help. I have always had very sensitive eyes. Now I'm blind, but I don't know if this is like a thing because my eyes are like super diseased or if this is just a thing that I would have had if I was sighted too. But my eyes are just super sensitive, which means like mascaras, makeup removers, eye creams, I burn my eyes, make my eyes water, all sorts of things. So if anybody else deals with this, comment and let me know your favorite products for sensitive eyes that don't irritate or burn your eyes, make them water, the skin around your eyes, all of it. Let me know. And also, if you're also blind, does this happen to you too? Or is this just really a me thing? This is not just because Molly is blind. She asked that question if it was just because she's blind or if this happens to sighted individuals. This is something that happens to everyone. I see this really commonly in my office. I get a lot of patients who come in with this complaint. Likely, if you found this video, you experience it as well. And even for me, this was something that I just could not tolerate a lot of different eye makeups. And you start looking for certain products, but you're not even sure what to look for. And until I started instituting some of these foundational changes to improve the health of my eye anatomy, my eyelids, my eyelashes, only then could I start tolerating wearing makeup. And so this is basically what I do when someone comes into my office and I'm going to step you through my entire process. Basically, we peel it all back. We stop all of the makeup. We stop all of the creams. We stop it all. And then we look at what we need to do to really just make everything a lot healthier. And then we slowly start adding things back in. So that's the way that we can get people back into wearing makeup because we all love it and we should be able to wear it. But there are some caveats. So let's go through them. So if this sounded like you, the red, swollen, teary, itchy, watery eyes, you are not alone. There's typically three reasons as to why people get these type of reactions and feel like their eyes are so sensitive. First is allergens. Uh, you can be allergic to a lot of different products that are in these specific makeups. Now, it can cause either a contact dermatitis or an allergic reaction. And I've done an entire video on allergic reactions to eye makeup. And one of the main culprits is nickel. Nickel is in a lot of different eyeshadows, it's in a lot of different eye makeups, and it really is very, very allergenic. So it can cause a big allergic reaction for a lot of different people. Now here's the thing, what you're allergic to is not necessarily what I'm allergic to. And everybody is so individualized as to what their triggers are. And I even did a video on one of the most popular micellar waters that everyone with sensitive skin absolutely swears by. And for me, it caused a huge allergic reaction. So if you start using a substance, if you start using a makeup product and it causes a reaction, you absolutely must discontinue it. Even if you feel like it says sensitive skin, even if other vloggers have told you about it, stop it right away. And then the second thing is you can develop an allergic reaction to a product even if you've used that product one, 10, or even a thousand times before, you can still develop a reaction to it. So you have to be mindful of that because sometimes when people come in to see me, they're not sure what it is that's causing the reaction. And they think, well, I've been using all of these products for years and years and never have had an issue. It can't be any of that. And that's not true. So that's why I peel it all back and we start from scratch. All right. So 
fine. I told you that allergy is one of the reasons that you can have this sensitivity to eye makeup. So what do you do? What do you look for? Well, a lot of things will say hypoallergenic. And you guys know the FDA doesn't really regulate the cosmetic industry in the United States as it does in other countries. You can't really, unfortunately, look at, at the boxes per se and use them as much of a guide other than actually reading the ingredients. So if it says hypoallergenic, what it means is that it has fewer products that cause an allergic reaction. That doesn't mean that it's 100% safe. So again, if you've had a reaction to something, even if it says hypoallergenic, discontinue using it. Also remember that the word natural, it doesn't mean a lot. There are a lot of things that are natural that can still cause an allergic reaction. So don't use that as something to look for. Another thing you might see on boxes is ophthalmologist tested. Now that sounds great, but ophthalmologist tested could simply mean as they send me a product in the mail, give me a survey and I mail it back to them. That's ophthalmologist tested. What instead I recommend is there are a couple lines that are developed by ophthalmologists that I really like. One is 2020 Beauty um, by Dr. Diane Campos. She is amazing and she has her own eye makeup line. And the other one is called You and I, and that's developed by Dr. Nikki, another ophthalmologist. So I know that those products in those two lines are safe because they are actually created by ophthalmologists, but ophthalmologist tested doesn't necessarily mean that much. All right, so what ingredients should you avoid? Number one, parabens. And you probably have heard about parabens and forever chemicals. And we're not talking about the hormone dysregulation or the fertility influence right now, but simply parabens can cause allergic reactions. So it is something that you want to try to avoid if you know that you have sensitive eyes. Second, fragrance. Now, dermatologists hate fragrances, especially in skin creams, and I am no different. There is no reason for a fragrance to be in your eye makeup. Your eye makeup does not need to smell good. And if anything, it is just another ingredient that can cause an allergic reaction. So avoid any kind of fragrance. Look for something that says fragrance free if you need to, um, or it just might not even be on the box. But if you can recognize fragrances in the ingredient list, avoid it. Lanolin is another one. It's an ointment made from sheep's wool. It's a moisturizer, but oftentimes people can have a reaction to it. So if you see lanolin in the ingredient list, stay away from that. Now, one really common ingredient is BAK, which is benzyl alconium chloride, and it's a really, really common preservative. It's an antimicrobial. You find it a lot in eye drops, but when it's in cosmetics, it tends to be at slightly higher percentages, and people have reactions to preservatives. Oftentimes, when they're having a reaction to eye drops, it can be the preservative in the eye drop. So if it has BAK in it, which a lot of eye makeup does, then that might be something you consider discontinuing as well. Wax, remember I talked about how natural things can also cause allergy? Well, wax is very natural, but also can cause a lot of allergic reactions, as can cinemates, which is found in a lot of more of the natural products, but also can elicit this type of reaction. Now, some mascaras will have prostaglandin analogs in them. What's a prostaglandin analog? It's the lash growth serum. So there are a bunch of different mascaras that incorporate these kind of prostaglandins into the mascara to really just lengthen and make your lashes look more full. But the problem with that is that these prostaglandins actually have been shown to cause eye redness. So I've done a couple different videos on what's in your lash serums, side effects of lash serums, and even natural lash serum choices. So you can check those out for alternatives, but definitely avoid anything that says like isopropyl clopristinate. That's a really common prostaglandin analog that they will put in mascaras typically. So avoid that because that really will cause a lot of redness and can cause stinging. Now, the second reason that a lot of people have very sensitive eyes to makeup is dry eyes or dry eyelid skin. Dry eyes can be really incapacitating. You might think it's just, oh, it's just dry eyes. Well, Dry eyes can be to the point where you can't even tolerate a fan. I have a ceiling fan right up here because the eyes have so much inflammation on the front surface on the cornea. So if you want to start rebuilding your tolerance to eye makeup, it's really important to treat the dry eyes and the dry eyelid skin. Now, what makes your eyes dry? There's, again, a couple different reasons. Your tears can evaporate too quickly 
or you might not be making enough tears. So if you're not making enough tears, then you can use an artificial teardrop. That's a great treatment. Not an anti-redness drop, an artificial teardrop, something like Refresh, Genteel, Blink. Those are all great options. You want to even go one step better, use a preservative-free artificial teardrop. All of those uh, companies, those brands that I mentioned, make preservative-free artificial teardrops, and that's going to be the absolute best for your eyes. Second, you want to make sure that your natural tears are staying around long enough. Your tear film is built up of three components an inner like mucin layer that's created by the goblet cells, a middle water layer, which is created by the tear glands, the lacrimal glands, and then an outer oily layer created by the meibomian glands. The meibomian glands are right where your eyelashes are. There's about 30 of them on the lower lids and about 50 on the upper lids. And they make the oil for your tears so that your tears don't evaporate so quickly. So they're really, really important. And if your oil glands are blocked, which can often happen when you wear makeup, then your tears evaporate too quickly, you get symptoms of dry eyes, then it starts this cascade, right? You're wearing makeup, your eyes get dry from the makeup, and then you can't tolerate makeup anymore. So the really simple thing that we need to do is unblock those oil glands. So just a hot compress, that's all you have to do. You can do it with a washcloth and hot water. You can do it with these eye masks that you can buy online and I'll link to them below. Or you can just do the poor man's version, which is what I do, even though I have these eye masks and I really like them. So take a clean white athletic sock, fill it with a cup of uncooked rice and throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Make sure it's not too hot by checking on the back of your hand. You don't wanna burn your eyelids. And then you can just use those little rice socks and that heat it stays hot for about you know, 10 to 15 minutes, which is what you want. That heat's going to open up your natural oil glands so that the oil can get where it needs to into your tear film. Because to have a great tear film, which is so important, you need everything, the oil, mucin, and the water layer all to be in the proper proportions. So that's a really easy way to treat the mybomitis or the blockage of the oil glands. Now, what about the dry eyelid skin? So for flaky skin, which can then make you really, really intolerant of anything on it, like eyeliner or eyeshadow, you want to moisturize. And a simple moisturizer you can just buy at the drugstore is Aquaphor Healing Ointment. Try not to get it into the eyes but it is we really love it it's a great one it's one I recommend a lot sometimes you need to see your eye doctor because you might need something a little bit more advanced like a low dose steroid ointment for really really severe flaking it is not the same thing as the hydrocortisone ointment that you can buy at the drugstore do not use those kind of ointments on your eyelid skin your eyelid skin is your thinnest skin in your body so you absolutely have to be careful about the type of steroids you put on it because steroids thin your skin even more. So any steroid you put on should be prescribed only by an ophthalmologist or an optometrist, not by just going out to the drugstore and picking it up. But you need to moisturize or sometimes even use steroids so that you can get your skin barrier back to where it was. And that's going to help allow you to resume makeup wear. And then the third reason that people are often um, intolerant of makeup is inflammation of their eyelids. You can have inflammation of your eyelids because you have a rheumatologic disease. There's certain diseases like you know lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or even Sjogren's disease that make everything like really dry and very challenging um, with the dryness and the skin. Or more commonly is something called blepharitis, which is just inflammation of the eyelids. So going back to those meibomian glands, they're all blocked up, but not just blocked up, they're causing a lot of vascularization, a lot of blood vessel growth, and a lot of issues with inflammation in the eyelids. So what you have to do is really clean everything so, so well. So you've got to clean these eyelid margins super well. And the best way I recommend, you can get OcuSoft lid wipes. You can buy them online, super easy. They're pre-moistened towelettes and they help you get rid of all the dirt and debris that is building up the oil, clogging those natural glands. You can also use a tea tree foaming cleanser, um, which I'll link below. And then there's a foaming cleanser from another one of the ophthalmologist companies. And I'll also link that below. So there's a lot of different ways to clean the eyelids and I'll link a couple of my favorite products down below but it's really important that you number one if you're wearing makeup and you're still intolerant you've 
got to get make sure you're taking it off every single night. But usually if you're so intolerant, then I would say let's start from scratch. Let's just build up that good base of cleaning your lids well, doing the hot compresses, making sure you've got a really nice healthy tear film, and then slowly add in the products that don't have any of these, you know, types of ingredients that typically cause allergies like parabens or wax or um, et cetera. And then last, I try to just avoid any waterproof eye makeup just usually it requires so much to remove the waterproof makeup plus the fact that a lot of the ingredients i talked about wax parabens are in waterproof makeup to make them waterproof so those ingredients tend to cause reactions as well all right guys if you've had issues with your sensitive eyes and being intolerant of makeup i'd love to hear from you share it, your comments your stories below in the comments if you have found techniques that have helped let you start wearing makeup again or your favorite products i'd love to hear about them so please list them below and if you have any ideas for future videos i am now reading absolutely every single comment so please please let me know until next time make sure please please to subscribe like this video share it with people that might have the same thing because i know that a lot of people are so nervous to talk to their eye doctors about this i know one of my husband's patients when i saw her instead of my husband usually seeing her she almost seemed like scared to ask me about eye makeup like embarrassed and this is not anything to be embarrassed about. There's a reason that all of these issues happen and we wanna be able to treat you so that you can do what you want and that you can look as fabulous as you want and tolerate wearing the makeup that you want. So until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa, it was good to see you. Bye-bye.